talking about maybe an hour just to be just of a break, huh? After lunch. Okay. Uh, I suggest there's a there's a walk going up the hill. At the top of the hill, you can see the uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, so, okay, so we will continue. What what happened to my uh, They go to 
together. Now, no, great, grateful people are happier people. They are less depressed, stressed, and more satisfied with their lives and their social relationships. Um, one of the things that you might talk about is social relationships, you know? Uh, when, uh, satisfaction with it has something to do with uh, being satisfied with your social relationship is in a sense really being happy about other people. No? Well, why first of you writing letters of thank you? Uh, just the idea of saying thank you. And then the, uh, the second thing that we would like to do is just go back to the Eucharist and ask ourselves, why is the Eucharist called Eucharist? I thank you. Okay, so first, there, and then uh, we'll hear from you if you have any comments about the experience of writing letters without revealing any names. So it is a very private activity. I just want to get your impressions or share whatever you experience at that time. So first thing, the actual saying of thank you. Remember it flashed here and I went through it but I wanted to deal with it now. Ah, saying thank you. I guess you do that, huh? But there are other ways of saying thank you. For us Filipinos, we tease about it, no? Galing naman, like that. We, we, it's, not, it's not very cultural to us now. No. We say, oh, thank you, huh? Like that. So, do not, it, because it can be mechanical, if you, if you say, oh, thank you, you know. But act out your thank you. Uh, do something that will show that you are really grateful to the person who has, who has done this for you. Okay? It's not just a word, thank you. It's really how you act, how you live your thank you with other people. And the one that I wanted to focus on a little bit more is the letters that you have written. Because that is a way of saying thank you. The point therefore is, you can thank a person even if that person is not here anymore. It is because we believe that they are always with us, no? Mm -hmm. that especially the second letter to someone who is gone. Do you remember I quickly, very briefly mentioned when my father died several years ago, he died young. One of my brothers was, and we were still young, you know, we were still in college, you know. He just became very depressed, almost. And finally I talked with him, and I began to realize that he, he said that there was something I really wanted to say to Papa, but I just could not say it. So now, I said, well, why don't we do it now? No, anyway, but we believe that he is not far away from us. So the same thing that I, have, I wanted you to experience, saying thank you is not just thank you, thank you. It's also thanking God for thank you to persons who are not even here with us anymore. Okay. Third kind of thank you is to the person who is difficult. That is the most difficult thing to do, no? And there are, and this is not to put down, there are some people who are just not easy. And you probably are not easy to them either. Okay, it's a chemistry, no? Chemistry. And I want to be very honest with you, he's a cold priest. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I pray for him, Lord, Lord. <coughs> <laughs> I just don't feel comfortable with it. Do you have that experience? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really want to say things to him, but I cannot. For I find it very difficult when it doesn't come out deep. With the other guys I'm living with, oh, we can tease about everything. What, what am I trying to bring out here? That very often you cannot actually say thank you to someone. <coughs> Or they might have been feeling, well, write that letter. Write that letter. It's okay. It's okay to do that. Uh, it may not reach him eventually, but the act of writing that letter is good for you, not just for the other person. It's good for you. And you know what? It's going to be good for that person also, because you will change in the writing of the letter. Uh, so, again, try to exercise that or do that. Um, that whenever you have something to say to someone who is difficult to talk with, but you really are, would like to be grateful to him for what he or she has done, write a letter. Don't feel that you have to go there and talk to that person. Okay? So that's what I mean by saying thank you in 
means I thank you. Did you know that? Huh? It is from the Greek. Eu kareste o. I thank you. I'm grateful to you. And most of us are aware that the Mass is a Eucharist. It is a thank you to God. But very often we might we might miss the point. The thank you is not said by us. It is said by Jesus Christ to his Father. Thank you for sending me here to be with these people. And when we celebrate the Mass, we thank the Father with Him. <coughs> he is the one that is thanking. We are not thanking Jesus. In a sense, you can offer that. But the point of the Eucharist table is Jesus Christ, at the end of His life, thanked God, His Father, for sending Him to the earth. I thank you for giving me these people. If the original words, are, the original text of that are found in St. John's chapter 17. That's called the priestly prayer of Jesus. If ever you feel down, you need some, something to lift up, chapter 17 of St. John's, that has to be uh, most beautiful. Do not let your heart be troubled. That's how it starts. Do not let your heart be troubled. Chapter 17, go to that. Anyway, that's where it begins. Now, the idea that Jesus is thanking his Father and we, who are a part of him, thanks the Father with him, through him, and in him. Uh, you, know, you know, that's the formula. No, no. Through him, with him, and in him. In the unit of God, all glory and praise to the Father. That's what the priest, that's called the great Amen. No, through him, with him, and him. So again, the, the most important thank you that we can say, official, liturgical, theological, is <coughs> at the Eucharist, at Mass, through Jesus Christ. With who thanks his father. And of course, as uh, we can see brought out earlier, we thank Jesus for giving us his body and his blood. Yes, we should thank him for that. <coughs> the Mass itself. The point is to thank God through the Father. That is the important thing for us. Okay, I will end there. And now I would like to ask you, what did it feel like to be able to write a letter to God, to someone and you I said this is that's very private. You keep those letters to yourself. You can add to it or write to other people. But was it helpful, for example? And how? How was it helpful to you? Anyone? You don't have to come to the front. Just yes. see, man. Yes. We were able to unburden ourselves with whatever we said. We put all things we did. But I don't know, you were able to get things that we were getting deep down inside of you. Yeah, that's one, that's one purpose of it. That's one effect of it. So, so you try to remember that the person who loves you and influences you while you are growing up. Oh yeah. Oh, you, you wrote to your parents, didn't it? No, I wrote to my mother's older brother. He, he is the person influenced me to study hard, to be courteous, to be nice to people that you know. So he will develop, develop the friendship with them. Okay, so you're, you're grateful to him for that, huh? Yeah. Okay, okay. Anyone else that you would like um, to share? As you can see, tell my mom. It's like you know, um, pour out everything you have done and support God oh. for you and Him. It's very personal. Yes, yes. But there's no limit to what there's you can say, you know? Well, that's the, that's the thing about writing a letter. There are no limitations. Mm -hmm. Because the person might say, you're very busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but here, you've got every, all the time that you have. And it doesn't have to happen in one thing. It can be a continuous thing. But there was some, someone here. Oh, it makes you feel good to mm -hmm. express your love, your sentiments, and your regrets. Mm -hmm. It makes okay. you feel better. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And especially when I regret now that we were never able to say, to say to each other. Yes. Or that we could not say to each other now alive. Now I'm, I'm sorry, but right. sometimes it's so difficult to say <laughs> thank you. So anyone else sharing? Sige. 
with uh, Christina. The, uh, the thing that probably moved me the most was the letter to the difficult. To the, to the difficult the person. Difficult person.
understanding, knowledge, fortitude, piety, and the fear of the Lord. So that each morning, I will meet these standards. For I am weak. I, I, I'm only human. And so I subject myself to His uh, divine guidance. That is mm -hmm. what I do. And everything around me, uh, I am very fortunate that when I open my eyes and look at the window, I feel this, I can see the sun rising, and I see the Lord in, that sun, in the sun. It's between the mountains and the, the, the trees and all. That is why I love nature. Because through nature, I am inspired. Mm -hmm. So I start the day with it, and then after praying for everybody that I need to pray for the special needs and the concerns, I pray the rosary. Okay. All right. Sister. Uh, here's a letter I wrote to my mother-in-law. She died here at this time. Okay. Although my, we ha I have a good relationship with my mother-in-law. She was very nice to me. And in fact, we were a family. A lot of I say thank you, Nana, for listening to me when I talk to you. Thank you for being understanding. Thank you for being my takampi all the time. <laughs> Thank you for June, that's my husband. Because of you and Tata, I have him. Because of him, I have two sons, the love of my life. They are both wonderful, Nana. And I can thank God enough for them. Thank you, too, for <coughs> three wonderful grandchildren. Although one of them is very makulit, <laughs> it pains sometimes, but I love him. Thank God for you, Nana. Wow. Thank you for I never you really know. realized that I had to thank him, her, for all these things. Yeah. We, we talked together, we, we got gossip, not we gossip or something like that. But it just dawned on me today that I never really thanked my mother in law. And every Wednesday, my grandchildren said, Oh, Grandma, it's Wednesday because my grandchildren uh, get out of school at 1.30. And so, Grandma, let's go to gra let's go to visit Grandma. And so, we visit her Wednesday okay. after school. Mm -hmm. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, tell me the camera. I um, I celebrate the letters I wrote uh, for long, longer, longest. The longest letter to God was on one page. The second letter was on one page. Why is it the third letter for those who do the person who the meanest to us was the longest letter? I don't know if anybody has the same thing. Third letter the
then you can look for the good in that person. That's why it's important, I think, yung idea na I have to forgive myself for, for not liking or... Baka you were mean to the world.
me that you you don't have a problem, she has a problem. Así que, we will end here just by encouraging you to do what you did, no no. Remember I put up here right at Gratitude Journal? That's what you just did. Oh, you just wrote the Gratitude Journal. So do that ever so often. You could think of something on it. It probably just, it doesn't have to be a mean person. It could be someone you really like, you know? That it would be kind of forming to say thank you. Just do it. Yeah, put it in a notebook. I have a notebook that thing. Oh my God. I'll see again. She found a thank you happiness and with gratitude. So these are all my sociological studies. Higher levels of control of their environments, personal growth, purpose in life, and self-acceptance. The people who came here, Kanina, to plan, how, how very often that they have personal growth, okay, purpose in life, and so on. Once more, it is associated with growth, but which causes one or the other, it doesn't really matter to me. The important thing is that they are associated. Gratefulness has something to do with control. You talk about the levels of control. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? The opposite of your no control. If people become very anxious because you have no control. No, that's the cause of anxiety. We don't have, you don't feel there is any control. Give you an example of what I mean by that. Very, very, very personal. I, when, when I was in the mission in the Philippines, I used to fly a plane. You know? I mean, I, 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 uh, but not me as the pilot. We were taught, no, we were taught how to fly a plane. We had a small mission plane in Sulu. It, it takes hours, days, to go from one island to the other. So we had to have a plane. And the pilot was also a priest. He says, all of you priests should know the basics of flying. Otherwise, if something happens, what are you going to do? Just shout, ah, help me! No, no, whatever. <laughs> In any case, talking about control, I used to be very afraid of flying. Oh, Talaga. And yet, when I was holding that stick, I felt free as could be. I could pull, I could pull up, pull down like that. Something to do with control. I had control of the plane. When I'm sitting in the back of a 737, I have no idea what the pilot is. <laughs> I cannot tell him this, I cannot tell him that. But that, I have to get over that myself. The, the idea, therefore, is level, when you're great, you have higher levels of control, of peace, therefore, in your life. And maybe you want to look at yourself. Whenever you feel anxious, and uh, maybe it has something to do with controlling something. And we have to have control. But if we cannot have absolute control. So there has to, again, to be that balance. Do you have control? Do you're anxious about <laughs> go back to the parking space. <laughs> I have absolutely no control. <laughs> you know, I could have, I said, one of, one of the things I thought was a call for a petty glory to stand by there. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
there's actually a workshop for procrastination. <laughs> 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 if you're you a nurse or a, someone with one family, you get six units. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, planning. And this is important, I think, because spending more time planning how to deal with life rather than saying someone else's problem. Or I'll ask someone else to do it. Or they he will do it. No, I have to do that. And I have to do it now. Not, not exactly as soon as possible, but whenever the opportunity comes, let me do it now. The opposite is that that issue is going to be carried with you for a long, long time. Oh. And it's like a burden that you carry, no? And you carry it on your shoulder now. Maybe I should go see a doctor about this. Oh, later, my lap. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually, there's no such thing as later. You're dealing with it now. You're not just acting with it. What is it? It is an anxiety in the back of our minds. Maybe I should do this, or maybe I should throw out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't deal with it, that garbage is going to smell. It will not solve the problem. Procrastinating will not solve the problem. You've got to do it now. Okay? Work on that. Absolutely now, as soon as you can. But once again, procrastination is one of the best ways of not dealing with the problem. That you, you would rather just do, do something else. Okay, next. Grateful people are more likely to cope with transitions. And this is again a part of life. There will be that we get older. People in our lives die and leave, or friends <coughs> go away. We have to deal with those things. We have to deal with transitions in our own lives. And that's, that's part of the way we are. But we have to cope with it. Okay, again, coping, they are coping. They are more likely to deal with transitions. It could be a change of job. Being fired from a job is a transition also. So that's, that's part of the, uh, the idea that grateful people, for some reason or another, deal with transitions. Why do you think that is? Just, just off the top of your head, this is not an exam. What came to my mind is this. They cope with transitions because they can see the good in transition. Able to adapt changes. Able to adapt changes. Adapt to changes because you can see the good in doing it. Rather than say, napakamalas ko naman. No, so that's such a depressing thought. No? Malas. Oh, <laughs> really? malas <laughs> So transitions. We, are, we have to think, uh, I mean, cope with that because again, it is one of the realities of life. I think that you must. Oh yeah. And then, after having done all of these, then they grow from the experience. A typical reaction or result of dealing right away without procrastinating is that you grow from the experience. And what does uh, what does growing what does growing mean? The ne next time this will happen, I know exactly what I will do. Okay? Rather than getting angry with that but, and I don't know, I, I talk very much about <coughs> anger because is that all again part of us, no? A anger very often has something to do with uh, not getting what we want. Yeah. <laughs> not getting what we want. And that, that is just not, that is not growing from our experience. The idea is, if this did not happen, then how can we deal with it? This is exactly how we will do with it the next time. But if we keep dealing with the negative, then it will not, nothing will happen in our own life. Okay, so that's, that's another thing. And I think there's some more here. Yes, there is. Oh, remember at the beginning, <coughs> we are not complete. You and I are not complete. No, no matter who you are, what you are, what your, how many degrees you have in, in college, we are not complete. We need each other. So, people who are grateful will tend to seek the support of others. Now, reverse that. Maybe people who seek the support of others are more grateful. It's associated with each other. And remember I said that no? this idea of seeking the support of others, it is a recognition also that we need each other. We need each other. That is a big thing.
participation in American culture. Because, uh, because it's the Lone Ranger. He rode off into the sun, sun. He said, all alone by himself. That's shame, but that's a movie. It plays out. <laughs> Fades out at the end. Eventually, you have to look for food, Glenn. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> there is no such thing as being alone. Right? We need each other. Is it true that we we need each other? Uh, no matter what you might think of some people, but we need each other. We all get to convince ourselves of that. Remember the idea of this connects to the scriptures, no? You body of praise. Yeah. You missed it up by. We'll be talking about a reason it's not here or it came up because I'm preparing for a, for my homily tomorrow, Corpus Christi. Yeah. You know, body of praise. Yes. And Saint Paul, you remember that? Where he says uh, the eye is not the the ear, the ear is not the nose and all that. And it's uh it's this the ear needs the body. I mean the ear needs the nose. The nose needs the eye and all that. <laughs> the one I open, the joke I open that goes with me. It's a good thing that the ear does not look like a nose. <laughs>
that's such a, that's such a wonderful feeling that you are able to help someone who doesn't even know it. Okay, so given that, so how? How do we develop being hope or uh, being uh, thankful? So these are just a few suggestions on what you can do for your life, no? and, and you have done it already here, you, you, but again, to organize this. The first thing to remember is that gratitude is, is a decision. It does not come naturally to us. Think about it. We want to be macho, to be alone by myself. It doesn't come naturally. So we have to decide to do it, to be grateful. All right? It is part of our, okay. And what are the things that we can decide on to do in order to arrive at gratitude? So here's the first thing that I have seen. Begin and end each day with two or three minutes in gratitude. When do you begin your day? When you wake up? No? Yeah. Okay. Now, since, <laughs> believe it or not, since I was asked by Cora to prepare something on gratitude, I've actually tried it. It works. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I wake up, instead of thinking, what am I supposed to do today? <laughs> I think, thank you, Lord, and be to God. <laughs> and what does it mean to say to be to be in gratitude? Just again, feeling that, feel thankful when you wake up. The first thing that you want to feel when you wake up is just to thank the Lord, to thank Him, thank you that I'm still alive, or I don't know, I'm still in good health, or whatever it may be. Thank God. Stay in that, and you know, two or three minutes doesn't seem, but actually it's very long if it's the first time you've done it. One minute like Kanina, we said, let's stay for a few moments of silence. One minute, yes, it was one minute only. And yet it seems so long. But later on, as you, as I noticed myself, I, I, uh, I, I developed that idea that two or three minutes, it's not, it's not that long, really. Okay, so again, when you wake up and then, of course, you end each day. As you go to bed, so it doesn't have to be formal, but be great, grateful for the day, the things that have happened during the day. And, and that's probably a good way of an examination of conscience, rather than, where did I do wrong? <laughs> yes, I did a lot of wrong, but here were the blessings that I received this day. A word from someone, an email from someone, something that happened during the day for which you can, you can thank that. So, parang you end all of, begin and end the day with in gratitude, thanking the Lord for, for all of it. Here's another how-to. Prayer. When we pray, how do you begin your prayer? May Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Open a book. Why not, again, suggest your love, no? Don't just stop there and say, I'm going to first be thankful to God that He has given me this opportunity to pray. Right, right now. That, that in itself is worth thanking God for. So you enter into prayer in a spirit of gratitude. And why is that enough? Again, the association with happiness like that. If you enter into, you know, into, into prayer, a prayer of God, or if I don't pray, what will happen to me, you know? That's not a negative feeling, no. No. No, no, you, you pray to the Lord. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to be able to pray. That, that alone is already enough. And here's, here's one thing about prayer with God. Prayer in gratitude. Many, many people ask, no, no, but you know, I get distracted in prayer. But you know, I start and then all of a sudden all kinds of things come. Thomas Merton has a word about that. He says, even the very act of wanting to pray is a prayer. The very act of wanting to pray is already a prayer. Does that, does that make sense? Because what is prayer? Prayer is your relationship with God, you know? So the one to want to pray is already in itself a prayer. So even if you get distracted, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just go back, go back to what you're afraid about. Distraction.
Confucian is not something that is bad. No, it's a challenge for us to go back to focus. So again, you begin and end every prayer in gratitude. And then maybe after that you can say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So Pumaso painted the spirit of in prayer with a, with a spirit of gratitude. The same thing, when you come to the end, glory be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, why not pause for a few seconds? Thank you, Lord. You know, I, I was able to do this. Okay, here's one more thing. This is kind of difficult. Not like this, where we don't have to do anything. Some people, I am not doing this. Okay, so I'm giving this advice to you because I saw it somewhere. Gratitude journal. They say that if, if it's not like you're telling a story, just write the what, like what you did, Kanina. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. that's a, that's the beginning of a gratitude journal. That write down the things that you are thankful for, and it could happen any time of the day. It doesn't have or or here's the if you're, you're always in the computer, email it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> And then it will always be in your inbox, right? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for this. Or if there was a, someone who came along and, and made you happy or whatever, yeah, keep a journal of that, of what you have done. What I do have is a journal. Not so much of thank you, but I keep a record of what has happened in my life. It used to be that it was very difficult, no? because many of the computer is very easy. No? But, you don't do computers. <laughs> <laughs> I find it very easy to, uh, to just write down stuff and I don't, I don't have to think, I just free flow my mind. I just, and then I go back over it ever so often and go, oh, interesting, this happened to me or this person gave. Okay. See, yeah, okay. So it's a, a journey. Finding the good in everything, even in the worst challenges that we might have. We have said this very often. And I put this here because this is a very Filipino idea. Parosa ng Panginoon. Kasi hindi mo magawa yun eh. Hindi ka lang kasal eh. Diba? Is it a very Filipino? Even if you know, when I was growing up with little children, you have to pray otherwise you'll get, uh, I don't know, a <laughs> nosebleed. God is not a punishing God. He's a loving, forgiving God. <coughs> you know, bad things that happen to us, it's not a punishment. It's not. It's a challenge for something that He wants us to do. It is not a punishment. This, this is a very cultural thing. I'm not saying you're guilty of it or bad. But it's part of our, I don't know about American culture, but at least in our, when I was growing up Filipino, that was such a strong thing. You have to do this otherwise it will happen. You have to go to Mass otherwise. You have to do this otherwise. And the image of God that we have there is one who punishes. It's just waiting for you to make a mistake. And then you'll get your... You know. So, good things even in the worst challenges. Why? First of all, God is not a punishing God. So make sure that you repeat that yourself. This is something that the Lord had. Okay, next. I got this from Genesis, no? The attitude that we should have. God looked at everything that he made and he found it very good. Is that what I, have you ever thought of it? I mean, meditated on that? That God himself looked at you. God himself looked at the flower and he found it very good. He God looked at this mean person. But the point here is that there is something that is good in everything. We just have to look for it. They go back to a Filipino and a Filipino joke, you know how we're growing up we used to have all kinds of sores in our foot. It was so unsanitary in the Philippines. It have sores here, so there. So when you have these flies that go around, what do they, they look for? The sore. So we used to, they used to say, parang lana. You're like a fly, you're always looking for the bad things. <laughs> it is a beautiful body. 
lobbying and everything, but what do you think? You look with them. <laughs> but God looked at everything and he saw that it was good. Okay, so that's 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 it. Now uh, let's see, what do you think we'll come next? Yeah. 
Okay. Así que, three letters. God, someone who was not here anymore. Now, if you're anxious about what to do with the letter, you're not going to share it with anyone. This is a very private thing. You might share feelings later on, but certainly. But if you want to, that's fine. That's fine. But I'm just saying, do not think that I'm going to ask you to share this with anyone. This is private. Do we have to sign it? Put it in the internet.